Good morning. Thank you all for being here. And I'm especially uh, want to welcome U.S. Attorney Phil Talbert from the Eastern District of California. He's done great work on this important case. And uh, another special welcome to Europol Director Robert w Mark Rain Wainwright, who traveled here from the Netherlands to be with us today uh, to participate in this important case of which various countries around the world have participated. Uh, Rob, we appreciate you. We have a tremendous relationship with uh, Europol. We work together on a daily basis with them, and this is the kind of activities and investigative work we must do in this day and age because crime knows no borders. Among other challenges, our great current country is currently in the midst of the deadliest drug epidemic in our history. One American now dies of a drug overdose every 11 minutes, and more than 2 million Americans are addicted to prescription drugs. And today, some of the most prolific drug suppliers use what's called the dark web, uh, which is a collection of hidden websites that you can only access if you mask your identity and your location. And it's called dark not just because these sites are intentionally hidden, it's also dark because what's sold on many of them, illegal weapons, stolen identities, child pornography, and large amounts of narcotics. Today, the Department of Justice announces the takedown of the dark web market Alpha Bay. This is the largest dark market web place takedown in world history. And Alpha Bay staff member claimed that this group serviced more than 40,000 illegal vendors, people who sell illegal products, for more than 200,000 customers. By far, most of this activity was in illegal drugs, pouring fuel on the fire of the national drug epidemic. Around the time of the takedown of this site, there were more than 250,000 listings for illegal drugs and toxic chemicals on Alpha Bay. More than two-thirds of all listings on Alpha Bay. As um, of earlier this year, 122 vendors advertised fentanyl. A, and 238 advertised heroin. And we know of several Americans who were killed by drugs on Alpha Bay. One victim was just 18 years old when in February she overdosed on a powerful synthetic opioid which she had bought on Alpha Bay. The drug was shipped right to her house through the mail. A little more than a week after her death, a victim in Orange County, Florida, died of an overdose from a drug bought on Alpha Bay. And then there was Grant Seaver. He was only 13 years of age and a student at Treasure Mountain Junior High School, Utah, in Park City, Utah, when he gave, passed away after overdosing on a synthetic opioid that had been purchased by a classmate on Alpha Bay. The ability of these drugs to so instantaneously end these promising lives is a reminder to us of just how incredibly dangerous these synthetic opioids are, especially when they are purchased anonymously from dark places on the Internet. And this is likely one of the most important criminal investigations of this entire year. I have no doubt of that. Make no mistake. The forces of law and justice face a challenge from criminals and transnational criminal organizations who think they can commit their crimes with impunity by going dark. This case, pursued by dedicated agents and prosecutors, says you are not safe. You cannot hide. We will find you. Dismantle your organization and network, and we will prosecute you. I believe that because of this operation, the American people are safer, people around the world are safer, safer from the threat of identity fraud and malware, and safer from deadly drugs. But the department's work is not finished. We will continue to find, arrest, prosecute, convict, and incarcerate criminals, drug traffickers, and their enablers wherever they are. 
The dark net is not a place to hide. We will use every tool we have to stop criminals from exploiting vulnerable people and sending so many Americans to an early grave um, per, uh, per, uh, perpetuated uh, by the, a perverted technology. I want to thank our international partners at Europol and in Thailand, the Netherlands, Lithuania, Canada, the United Kingdom, France, and Germany, all of whom have worked closely with us uh, to take down this criminal enterprise. And to all the Department of Justice law enforcement personnel at the Drug Enforcement Administration, the FBI, and to those from the IRS, criminal investigators, and the attorneys and staff, all of whom who worked tirelessly on this case, you have made us proud. You have made this country safer, and we thank you very, very much. Well, thank you, Attorney General Sessions. Good morning, and thank you all uh, for being here. I'm grateful to our law enforcement agents and prosecutors for the tireless work on this case and to our international partners for their extraordinary cooperation. The Alpha Bay case is part of a larger international effort to attack dark web marketplaces that broker criminal transactions. Their alleged criminal conduct includes selling illegal drugs like fentanyl and heroin, as well as stolen fraudulent identification documents and access devices, counterfeit goods, malware and computer hacking tools, firearms and toxic chemicals. This was a coordinated international operation against Alpha Bay and also another website known as Hansa Market, which the Dutch authorities have been investigating and shut down earlier today. As part of this operation, the two sites' administrators were arrested and authorities seized extensive evidence and illicit assets related to those enterprises. Now, this case started with several independent investigations, and we had the assistance of our law enforcement agencies who are represented here, uh, as well as several U.S. attorneys' offices around the country. We joined together and worked with our partners to coordinate the timing uh, of the takedown uh, of these websites. The Alpha Bay takedown and the arrest of its administrator could not have happened without the unwavering support of our international partners. I think that's one of the highlights uh, of this case today. We uh, worked with law enforcement authorities in Thailand, the Netherlands, Lithuania, Canada, the United Kingdom, and France, along with support from Europol. We're going to hear from our Europol director, Rob Wainwright, this morning. Our foreign partners conducted searches, seized evidence and proceeds of criminal activities, and made an arrest. Now, there were many moving parts to this investigation. Alleged members of the conspiracy used anonymizing techniques in trying to conceal their identities and their locations. Peeling back one layer after another uh, took us to new countries where we needed additional assistance from other law enforcement agencies. And with each development in the case, our international colleagues expressed an immediate willingness to assist. Dark websites like Alpha Bay and Hansa run on what's known as the Tor network. They're hidden services designed to conceal information that could reveal the identity or location of the website and its customers. So people using these websites believe that they're going to be anonymous. But this case demonstrates uh, that that is not always true. Many dark websites openly trade in narcotics, guns, images of sexual abuse of children, and other serious criminal conduct. An academic study published in 2015 found that the largest single category of hidden services on the Tor network was forums for the sale of drugs and contraband. It also found that 80% of traffic to hidden services related to sexual exploitation of children. Now, some sites have membership of hundreds of thousands of users across the globe. Those disturbing statistics explain why disrupting and dismantling dark websites is a priority for the Department of Justice, and international coordination is critical to our success. Administrators and users of dark websites use anonymizing techniques to thwart law enforcement activities. But our agents, our prosecutors, analysts, and support staff work tirelessly to locate the infrastructure hosting the sites and to identify the people responsible for them. These methods prove an ongoing challenge for us. Hundreds of sites on the Tor network still enable a vast amount of criminal activity to occur. But we are proud of the accomplishments that we announced today, and we recognize our work is not done. We face many challenges, and we need international assistance to overcome those challenges. The exceptional foreign cooperation with our operation to attack illegal activity on the dark web demonstrates that international partners stand in solidarity with us 
to deny safe havens to cybercrime. That helps us to protect the privacy, the safety, and the security of all Americans. And one other development I want to bring to your attention, which is that uh, uh, following the death of the defendant who's charged in the American case, uh, our U.S. Attorney in Eastern California, Phil Talbert, yesterday filed a civil forfeiture complaint, which will ensure that uh, appropriate action is taken with regard to all the assets uh, that were seized in the course of that investigation. Uh, this time, I want to introduce the acting director of the FBI, Andy McCabe. Thanks, Ron. <clears throat> Good morning, everyone. As the Attorney General noted, this is a landmark operation. Alpha Bay was roughly 10 times the size of the Silk Road. So we're talking about multiple servers in different countries, hundreds of millions of dollars in cryptocurrency, and a dark net drug trade that spanned the globe. It takes a whole lot of coordination and a shared purpose to pull off an operation like this. So with your patience, I'd like to thank a few of the folks without whom we, could, we would not be here today. First, I'd like to thank, thank the FBI's Sacramento field office, who took the laboring oar in making this operation a success. I'd also like to thank our folks in the Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Philadelphia, and Chicago field offices as well as the FBI's Criminal Investigative Division here at headquarters, the Cyber Division, and our legal attaché offices overseas. These teams did amazing work, but we're under no illusion that we do this kind of work on our own. We are extremely grateful to our partners in Thailand, in the Netherlands, Lithuania, Canada, the UK, France, as well as our partners in Europol. We especially want to thank our Dutch partners for their amazing work taking down the Hansa website to which many of the Alphabay users and vendors flocked after the demise of Alphabay. Taking down two major darknet sites at once is considerable, and it took a lot of effort, a lot of expertise, and a lot of teamwork. And as this level of teamwork and coordination shows, we will go to the ends of the earth to find these people and to stop them. There are some criminals that think of cybercrime as a freebie. They think they'll get away with it because there are too many players in too many countries. They think they'll get away with it because the schemes are too complex and because they operate in the shadows. But we are blending traditional investigative techniques and new tools to bring these individuals out of the shadows and into the light. The FBI's High Tech Organized Crime Unit targets criminal enterprises that conduct traditional criminal activity, like money laundering and the sale of illicit goods, through computers and the internet. Together with folks from the Cyber Division, the Violent Crime and Crimes Against Children programs, we're working to fill that gap, the gap between computer intrusions that target our data and technology and traditional crime facilitated by technology like the dark net. This team worked diligently to, to identify the location of the alpha base infrastructure and to identify the administrator and to shut down the site for good. Now, critics will say, as we shutter one site, another site emerges. And they may be right, but that is the nature of criminal work. It never goes away. You have to constantly keep at it, and you've got to use every tool in your toolbox. And that's exactly what we'll do. We've learned a lot over the years about taking down international criminal syndicates, and that same experience applies to organizations that are facilitated on the dark net. We know that removing top criminals from the infrastructure is not a long-term fix. There's always a new player waiting in the wings, ready to fill those shoes. It's like demolishing a building. Hacking away at individual walls and beams only does so much, but using federal statutes to prosecute these individuals is akin to blowing up the foundation with dynamite. Once the infrastructure implodes, it becomes difficult for the group to function. And with the weight of this kind of operation, the organization crumbles. So we will keep doing this great work and we'll continue to count on our federal counterparts and our international partners to be right here with us. And now I'd like to turn it over to one of our absolute closest partners uh, and, and uh, best colleagues from the uh, Drug Enforcement Administration, Robert Pattison, Acting Deputy Administrator. Rob, thank you. <clears throat> and good morning. <clears throat> I'm pleased to represent the DEA and join my other federal law enforcement colleagues in announcing the network, the Alpha Bay Network takedown. Extremely dedicated investigators, analysts, and prosecutors work to make this possible. 
I greatly appreciate the larger collaborative efforts of all our other federal partners, including the FBI, IRS, United States Postal Inspection Service, and Homeland Security. As Director McCabe just noted, these cases demand international collaboration, collaboration and cooperation. We are grateful for the work of our, federal, or our fellow law enforcement partners in Thailand, the Netherlands, Lithuania, Canada, the United Kingdom, France, and obviously Europol. As we are all sadly reminded on a daily basis, our nation continues to face an opioid epidemic. The dark web is an available and seemingly anonymous marketplace for the sale of these drugs. The DEA continues to be fully committed to addressing this epidemic. We are attacking the problem from multiple angles. From the traditional enforcement efforts targeting the major sources outside our borders that feel untouchable, to their networks that bring the drugs across our borders into this country, to the violent street gangs that sell the deadly poison in our local neighborhoods, and to the corrupt doctors and rogue pharmacies involved in the diversion of prescription drugs. Although the business models of these groups vary, they are all similar when it comes to the destruction they cause. And they all share one additional common characteristic. They operate on borrowed time. The Alpha Bay Criminal Network, led by Alexander Casas, was yet another contributing source feeding this epidemic, supplying countless addicts through direct sales and supplying drug traffickers across this country and others with larger quantities for redistribution. Alpha Bay was the largest dark market platform operating on the dark web. It was responsible for approximately $1 billion in illicit sales, a significant portion which came as the result, as already stated, from proceeds of the sale of drugs like fentanyl and heroin. And as the Attorney General brought up, more than 250,000 uh, listings for illegal drugs were on that site at the time it was taken down. The dark web seemingly allows for anonymity and creates extraordinary challenges for law enforcement. But as we have demonstrated in this case, these challenges are not insurmountable. Alexander Casas learned what so many others have. Hard work and determination by our law enforcement and law enforcement partners demonstrate yet again no one is untouchable. Collectively, we will continue to leverage our legal authorities and capabilities with a continued determination to identify and target criminals wherever they may hide, which includes cyberspace. We are keenly aware there'll be another Alpha Bay. But with each investigation, we learn more and get better. We will aggressively continue to pursue these attempting to hide behind the anonymity of the dark web. I'd like to specifically thank the dedicated men and women of the DEA and our partner law enforcement agencies for their incredible work on this particular operation. And to the many federal prosecutors who work tirelessly every day to bring these criminals to justice to protect our citizens. And with that, I'd like to introduce Europol Director Rob Mark Wainwright. Thank you very much. And I'm the final speaker, so we'll hold your attention just for a few minutes more, if I may. Thank you to the Attorney General and colleagues of the DOJ for inviting me to be part of this event today. And we're very pleased at Europol to have played our part in coordinating the international dimensions of this groundbreaking operation, especially in Europe. As you've heard, this outstanding law enforcement action here in the United States uh, to bring to an end Alpha Bay was coordinated with simultaneous action in Europe against another major criminal marketplace known as the Hansa Market. The shutting down of that, the Dutch authorities are announcing right now in the Netherlands at their own press conference. These two cases have been developed together and our joint hit on both of these dark market marketplaces is one of the most sophisticated law enforcement operations against cybercrime that we've ever seen. So the scale speaks for itself. You've heard the figures already. But Alpha, Alpha Bay and Hansa between them were the two of the top three criminal marketplaces on the dark web, trading hundreds of thousands of illicit commodities, drugs, and many others, the details of which you've already heard about. That's 40,000 vendors, depending on the marketplaces, to sell everything from fentanyl, illegal firearms, and malware for cybercrime attacks. So their coordinated takedown has, I think, punched a big hole in the operating ability of drug traffickers and other serious criminals around the world. But what made this operation really special 
was the strategy we ran to magnify the disruptive impact of the joint actions. Between Europol, the FBI, DEA and the Dutch police, the team play that we ran here was to take covert control of the Hansa market under uh, Dutch judicial authority a month ago, which allowed us to monitor the activities, criminal activities of users without their knowledge, and then shut down Alphabet during the same period. So what this meant in particular was that we could identify and disrupt the regular criminal activity that was happening on Hansa market, but then also sweep up all those new, new users um, that were displaced from Alphabet and looking for a new trading platform for their criminal activities. And in fact, they flocked to Hansa in their droves. We recorded an eight times increase in the number of new users on Hansa immediately following the takedown of Alphabet. And since the undercover operation to take over Hansa market by the Dutch police, the usernames and passwords of thousands of buyers and sellers of illicit commodities have been identified and are the subject of follow-up investigations by Europol and our partner agencies. So as a law enforcement strategy, therefore, leveraging the combined operational and technical capabilities of multiple agencies here in the United States and around Europe, it's been an extraordinary success and an illustration of the collective power we can bring as a concerted global law enforcement community to work against even the most challenging serious criminal enterprises. My respect and admiration goes to all of those involved here in the US, in the Netherlands, many other European countries, as well as many of my own colleagues in Europol. I think there are three other major implications uh, in this operation. Firstly, as you've heard, the infrastructure of the underground criminal economy has taken a serious hit, and much, much bigger even than uh, what we saw in 2013 with Silk Road. Secondly, the intelligence that we've yielded, especially through the monitoring of Hansa, has given us a new insight into the criminal activity of the Darknet, including many of its leading figures. We've already distributed through Europol new intelligence leads connected with Darknet uh, to already 37 countries around the world. And finally, of course, as you've already heard, there's a very strong message here uh, to those who engage in criminal activity on the internet, and the Darknet especially, that you're not as safe and you're not as anonymous as you think you are. And this, example, this operation is an example of the improving concerted ability of law enforcement to strike against criminals, even on the dark net. At Europol, we're standing up a new international team to monitor uh, dark net marketplaces in the future. And what we've seen today from this coordinated hit against these two marketplaces is just a taste of what's to come in the future. Thank you. All right, we'll take a few questions. Sorry. <coughs> Um, Attorney General Sessions, uh, this is not really a normal day. The President made very disparaging remarks about you, Attorney General of the United States, and your Deputy Attorney General yesterday. Given what he said, what is your reaction to those remarks, and how seriously are you considering possibly resigning? We in this Department of Justice will continue every single day to work hard to serve the national interest and we wholeheartedly join in the priorities of President Trump. He gave us several directives. One is to dismantle internet transnational criminal organizations. That's what we're announcing today. The dismantling of the largest dark website in the world by far. Uh, and I congratulate our people for that. Uh, I have uh, the honor of serving in, as Attorney General. It's something that uh, uh, it goes beyond any thought I would have ever had for myself. We love this job. We love this department. And I plan to continue to do so as long as uh, that is appropriate. Okay, well, Attorney General Sessions. How do you feel like you can effectively serve from here on out if you don't have the confidence of the president? We're serving right now. The work we're doing today is the kind of work that we intend to continue. 
Just um, last week, we announced the largest health care takedown uh, ever in the United States. We had all the major law enforcement leaders in my office yesterday to talk about our unified efforts to improve our crime fighting with state and local officials. So I'm totally confident that we can continue to run this office in an effective way. But I really would like for you to focus now on the work of the individuals behind me that have helped put this case together so that we can celebrate and affirm the work that they have done so that we can learn from it and get even better in the future. Thank you. Deputy Hudenil Rosenstein, the president told the New York Times yesterday that the fact that you're from Baltimore concerns him since there aren't many Republicans from that city. Is that something that's a valid concern in your view? What do you make of that criticism? As the Attorney General said, we are working here every day to advance the priorities of the Department of Justice and the administration. Uh, I was proud to be here yesterday. I'm proud to be here today. I'll be proud to work here tomorrow. Uh, and we are spending every minute working to advance uh, the interests of the Department. Uh, and as the Attorney General said, we're happy to answer any questions about this Alpha Bay case. It's a very important case. Uh, we've got a lot of folks here uh, who assisted in that investigation. And that's all I'm going to talk about today. Thank you. Any questions about Alpha Bay? All right. Thank you. <laughs>